layoffs in 2024, what you get for a million dollars in Santa Clara County, and inventory watch. Let's get started. All the layoffs in Santa Clara County or across the nation so far. Number of workers laid off. Now, I don't want to sound like I am trying to excite the, the, the industry, but I just keep an eye on a lot of different things. What's going on in multiple different industries because we don't live in a bubble. Real estate doesn't live in a bubble. High tech, healthcare, all that other stuff. I, I think tech is just going through the normal evolution of tightening their belts to show off their uh, quarterly earnings. And that's typically what they do. They trim the fat. So Google is one of them. YouTube, TikTok, seems like tech giants are trimming the fat right now. Now it goes down into here, and this is a little bit more of an accurate telling chart. Unity, it, Wayfair, Flipkart, Google, they're all about 1,000 to 2,000. Vroom, which is one of the automotive retailers, they sell used cars like Carvana and CarMax. They're laying off a huge number of their people, 80%. I heard they're actually closing their doors. If you look, if you remember, one of my main things that I always go to is this, the tipping points of our economy. And this is telling when you look at all these things. These are all industries that we're looking at that are giving us as consumers pinches. They're, there's overinflation. It's hard to make things work. It's hard to make it continue to go for go move forward. So right now we're all tightening our belts. And these are all the six tipping points in this house of cars that we're living in. It's important to keep that in mind. Now, these numbers are a little bit older. I, did, I looked up real quick on auto finance delinquencies, and it's, they say it's the highest it's been since 1996. I don't know how accurate that is, but we're seeing a large number of automotive delinquencies and a lot of them being repossessed. So could it be just an island unto itself or could it be a major tipping point to the rest of our economy? Just like it happened, the housing and finance crisis in 2008, the dot-com bust in the early 2000s, we don't know. Am I being inflammatory? No, I'm just keeping an eye out and having that conversation about what's going on in a larger picture of that. So keep that in mind, especially when times get tough for a majority of Americans, houses are still selling. It's crazy that it is, but it isn't. This episode is brought to you by Financial Intelligence. There's links down below to click to this. You can watch this. It's there's no, it's all education. We bring in people that some are salespeople, some are not, some are coaches, some are, they're also all small businesses, trust lawyers, everything just to educate you on things that we're not taught in school, things that we're not taught by our family and how to be, how to live below our means and how to live a better life financially and become more educated on that. All right. What do you get for a million dollars in Santa Clara County? Let's take a look at this guy. Two bedroom, one bath, 765 square foot in Sunnyvale. It, yeah. This one right here is, I'm going to go backwards, I guess. True fixer upper. Look at that. Wall heater. Looks like it's oil heat. Crazy guys. That's what this house looks like. It looks like a flat roof, almost flat roof. Two car garage, two bedroom, one bath for a million bucks. Complete fixer upper. Sunnyvale, California. If you want to take a look at where that is, we can open that up real quick here for you. And there it is. In the big picture, this is where it is right here. And it's right off of Fair Oaks in California. I sold a house a couple of years ago in Washington right here, which leads to this area right here, which is, this is a nice little area. Murphy Street, I go there every couple of weeks with a, a networking group and hang out and talk. If you're interested about that, let me know. But yeah, you're Sunny Bell, million bucks, two bedroom, one bath, fixer upper. That's what you get for a million bucks in Santa Clara County. If you have a house, you want to know how much it's worth, 
I know you can go to Zillow, but sometimes Zillow isn't super accurate. This is much more accurate. It's free to use. Please feel free to do it. Okay. Inventory. You want to have an inventory of about two. We need to have an inventory of about seven, eight, nine hundred in San Jose in order for it to be a balanced market. We're a fraction of that. We're a small fraction of that. It's it's scary how much it is. And yet houses do still stay on the market. We, we have, I want to say 45 houses that have been on market over 90 days, which that's not the norm because we're looking at, I think we were at 21 days on market in San Jose on average. Last year's 29, 21 days. See, Cupertino, 11, Los Gatos, 44 houses for sale, Saratoga, 11. Now these numbers underneath mean it bases it on the square miles of that city versus how many active homes. And it's the same thing for this is how many active homes over a thousand people in that population. And I have to go and redo these numbers, but those numbers aren't out yet. So I'm still using last year or 2022 data on population. Cupertino is one point or 0 0.188 homes per thousand people. That means there's one house available for, for five people available that are out there. Same thing here, Los Gatos, it's all very small. And I just, I think this really helps point out that we have a very low inventory. Gilroy is 36. For every 2,000 people, there's one house for sale, 36. 0.2 homes for sale in 16 square miles that are that make up Gilroy. So different towns are different and understand that Tampa and Cape Coral, they, when you look at the actual numbers, they include Cape Coral and other areas as well, but I use it as a base line. So you understand where we are day to day. For example, during the summer, we have about 4,000 homes for sale. Now it's 7,000 Cape Coral just got hit with another storm that whole area got inundated. Austin, 22, it's a little bit low. Atlanta, 1,700, which is funny. I just heard Atlanta is the top metropolitan area that industrial investors, you should call them industrial investors because they have 10, 15, 20,000 units under their belt. They have billions of dollars. They have a hedge fund and they're buying up single family homes yet there's still 1,700 houses for sale. LA is 23. So if you look compared to these numbers over here, the averages are, aren't are stepping out of norm. And that's another thing I will look for with this chart is that I wanna make sure that we don't see a major spike in inventory or a major drop in inventory. Like what we're seeing here, it's precarious. It's a little dangerous because we need to have about 700, 800 homes for sale to make it a balanced market. Now, is it a balanced market for buyers or sellers? No, it's for it's equality. If there were like 12 or 1500 houses for sale, like we saw in eight, then the buyers are going to be more choosy. They don't have, they can go do lowball offers. Houses sit on the market a lot longer. And that's where we are with this. So even if you're in San Jose, you can't demand pricing, right? There's still buyers out there, but rates are higher than they were a couple of years ago. There's a lot less buyers out there, but still demand is high. All right. So today we talked about layoffs, what's going on in the automotive market. Uh, what'd you get for a million dollars in Santa Clara County and inventory watch across the nation. I'm Vito with Avatano. Have a great weekend. We'll see you out there.